Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to be watching the ninth episode of Gushing Over Magical Girls. Now last episode we had a bit of a uh, status quo change, like a big shake up with uh, now we have now we have villain on villain violence because not all they're not a pillar, you know they they, they got their own ideas. Some of them actually do want world conquest and all that. Some of them just want to spend time with magical girls, you know? Sometimes ideals don't align perfectly, and that's why we get our infighting. But, uh, but yeah, so now we have, well, we, our original bad guy trio, they have more people to deal with besides just magical girls. And we didn't get to see too much of them fighting, except for uh, mostly Matama, our idol girl who's, she, she, she's doing her best, guys. You know, we got to fight her plenty, and just a little bit of the sister big big girl. You know, n not much of that, but I, I, I'm i sure we'll get more in the future. But Matama did her best, and, you know, she lost in the end. Which is unfortunate for her, because, you know, in true bad guy fashion, she gets back and, and gets punished, you know. <clears throat> One thing I didn't think about at the time, but I think that punishment scene kind of had the, had the, the, uh, the purpose to demonstrate a bit of a difference between, like, what Utena does to the magical girls and just straight up, like, punishing some, you know? Like, straight up violence, no, like, layer of just have you know, just everyone here is having a good time, BDSM, you know? That's just straight up violence, so... Yeah, I think they were trying to paint kind of a clear line between, you know, our bad guy and a real bad guy with that. Just kind of something I thought about after... After after the episode, it made no real difference to me as far as fabability goes, but just just thought I'd mention it. But uh, but yeah, it sucks to be Matama for sure. But uh, I think we're supposed to get more for this episode. I vaguely remember the title, maybe alluding alluding to that. But anyway, this intro's been long enough long enough as it is. So let's just jump on in and see where we go from here. You know, if I don't move things out of place. Three, two, one, play. As always, our little warning here in languages I do not understand. <clears throat> What are we talking about? Oh, Matama and Kiwi. We're gonna watch that. Yep, now she's finally caught up. <laughs> I mean, she's not gonna care about bad guys fighting each other. It's just convenient. This is not magical girl talk right here. <laughs> Just nice little waterfall over there. <laughs> of course, that's the kind of training she would choose. <laughs> Wet and hard. And she's blue, you know, water. <laughs> I don't think she's doing it right. Like a couple, like a couple of giant fists. Okay, because I was thinking I thought she had a weapon, but I guess not quite. We'll get her a whip. I like her chest is slightly visible in that shot as she mentions her weapon. I like to believe that was intentional. They're always so cool and car charming. I can speak, I swear. I'm a little bit tired, you know, going off my five five hours of sleep. It's 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 all good. Yeah, now that I have context for this girl's level of ability. Kind of gives a different feel to that part of the opening. Like, I kind of feel for the girl with her.
And the little shots. You go from so cool to char charming to so cute and, and oh, what was the other one? Uh, touch it. Gushing over pop vitals. Why does her top not match her bottom like at all? It, it bothers me a little bit. <laughs> but I'm glad she's getting a little bit of treatment here. I'm sure we're just waiting with the most anticipation. <laughs> what is all this merch? <laughs> That's unfortunate. But is this seriously her room? Does she just have like that much of her own merch? <laughs> it's kind of sad. I mean, if it's free, I'll take it. But like, on the off chance she gets famous one day. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, a couple of those posters are actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, she was so worried last time. Remember, she like dragged Cody Sue out. <laughs> oh, cool. 100, 144th scale. Mio, Mio Sotis. <laughs> she is definitely motivated. You just slaughter them all. <laughs> yeah, this is a group <laughs> that's ready for action. Okay, she's ready for her own action. And she actually has an audience, wow. I'm surprised. How much would it take us of this thing? Were they paid to be here? Although she wears that, she gets some audience, you know. I think it's a, what's called a gorilla concert. <laughs> I know, right? As always, me and Kiwi, we, we, we know what's up. There's some manipulation or bribery going on here. Lovely look. <laughs> that face says it all. <laughs> Maybe it's all like a projection. With her ability. We just, I don't think we know what she even does yet. She, she got something. Because she's fiddling with her phone. I don't know if that's doing anything. I'm not going to remember that. <laughs> Men do it. <laughs> well... We decided we'd liven it up, liven it up. <laughs> yeah, there was some kind of spell on them, as expected. <laughs> it was never a real concert. <laughs> That's just what I told you to get permission for this. Now that you have Utena, so you have no chance. Yes, we, we should. We, we, we have to. But she has her abilities, yeah, to manipulate bodies to some capacity. That's going to be a problem. Yeah, I didn't think about that in my calculations, that they also have backup. Oh.
Yeah. Still taking that outfit too. Yeah, she is a problem. You're just loud. That talk really just barely covers anything. Like Les said, hers. She gonna take that off? <laughs> ah, the scissors. <laughs> She's got your back. Sh Shikamaru. <laughs> And that scream, though. Oof. Oof. Oh, no, not this. Oh, no. Uh. Well, I guess now we know. Like zero power. That's not our fault that you're overpowered. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't done much in this fight yet, has she? I mean, please do. I... Yeah, when it comes to raw power output, she definitely has her beat. Well, that ain't true. Oh, you're jumping. <laughs> no faith. That'd be a good time to escape, guys. We you know, now we have more better idea of their abilities. You know, we could regroup, re strategize. <laughs> she ships it. Okay, this might be time for our comeback. Oof, crawling up my skin. The wind, it's a nice touch. And we can block that. <clears throat> Let them. <laughs> Says a girl that couldn't get her own audience at her concert. <laughs> Stop throwing things at us. Oh. Hopefully long enough. We have some good shots of them as a duo. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to lose to these two. We, we, we have three of us. <laughs> Boof! But not the tree! Really needs to stop sneaking up on us like that. <sighs> sneaking behind us. <laughs> Bunnies and rabbits and stuff. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh! oh. We got a little present for you. We can do teamwork too. Yeah, how do you like light shadow? 
I'm guessing you don't. Maybe banish her to the Shadow Realm. No kidding. Or skin? I don't know where she is. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I should have figured that. Now, gotta get you a couple girls to have some Yuri 3 reaction with. Ah, uh, the tables have turned, haven't they? <laughs> but I kind of want to. <laughs> she finally has her game face on. Love you, Kiwi. Wow, okay. Apparently everywhere she goes, she gets the stream in. <laughs> and we're out we're outside too on a stage. Now that'll get you an audience, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you want your audience, that's how you get it. <laughs> Maybe I should take it back what I said at the beginning. <laughs> You shut up. And here we go. I like she wears so much clothes to begin with, but you know. <laughs> and there we go. Finally battle ready. I know, right? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> this is so appealing to my ENF finish. <laughs> See, we have an audience there. Although they're not looking at us, but still, they're here. They can at least hear the song. <laughs> we established she's stupid, so you established that. <laughs> Did she really not know? Oh, that is sad. Oh god, that is sad. Oh, I feel for her now. <laughs> oh, oh, don't, don't make her cry. <laughs> you okay, Nakoto? You clearly appreciated it when you didn't know. <laughs> oh, God, we are seeing the karaoke in. Oh, it's even worse somehow. Uh. I mean, she used to be worse than she is now. <laughs> They're never going with her again. <laughs> it's everyone else's fault, always. <laughs> is mom gonna comfort her or rub it in? <laughs> oh, she knows. <laughs> she knows. Follow your dreams, honey. That's all, all I'll say. Have a plan B. I'll say that too. This poor girl. Not unless you get this horrible news, she has to do it while naked, no less. <laughs> oh, I will listen intently this time. You have my full attention. Being naked while well, I'm sure will make it sound better. <laughs> oh no, we're not going to miss this. This is what we came here for. Hey, 
have the same things. Don't worry too much. <laughs> some, I mean, they might be smaller in some areas, but the, the same idea. Yeah, don't give up. Pursue your dreams. Make my dream a reality. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it actually does sound better. I don't know if it's just the nakedness placebo, but <laughs> I think it makes a difference. <laughs> Let me cut the cord. Don't understand, just keep going. <laughs> yeah, we are gonna need a cleanup on this stage. Oh, damn! Well then. <laughs> There's some symbolism for you. I could easily say that was your best performance yet. Now they finally show the nips. She tried sort of cover them for the whole song. I guess she just gave up at the end. But yeah, that was great, Loco Matama. I, you know, I think you just got a new fan. Me, me and them, really. <laughs> that was great, Loco. <laughs> I loved everything about that. 10 out of 10. Cat hair freaking everywhere, freaking cat. <laughs> that would be concerning. <laughs> you know, some anime it happens. Especially for guys. Good stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot the last time we had a house meeting together. They uh, got pretty hot and they got pretty, and they got, they, they, there was some bonding. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> no, she's going to take them off personally. <laughs> well, you didn't like cycling on them. You seemed to enjoy it at the time. <laughs> Uh, Sayo didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Don't take it out on her. But yeah, the last hot spring team they had was, uh, was, 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 was great. <laughs> you know, hidden identity. <laughs> Feels weird seeing her in clothes now. You know, that's, that's unfortunate. I wanted to see that scene. Okay. An announcement. <laughs> Oh. Uh, Nakama Ghetto? <laughs> we had enough on that note, too. Okay. I mean, yeah, it seems legit. You know, we'll, we'll take the help as long as your value is aligned with ours.
Local X level. I don't know how you want to say that. Uh, okay, that was the uh, the ninth episode of Gushing Over Magical Girls. And as expected, we got more of our Loco Matama girl, right? And uh, we got a little bit more insight into her character. You know, we had a little bit of Magical Girl stuff this episode. Uh, not much. You know, it pretty much just amounted to, hey, Sayo, you need a weapon. And then we had a very fun little hot spring scene where she's like messing with her opai. And I'm also kind of wondering, like, what the heck's going on here? Is she just getting turned on? Being naked like that, you know, she's she, she just she that down bad. But when she mentioned the the whole last time thing, it just immediately clicked in my head. Like, yeah, the last time they were in the hospital together, things got pretty lewd. And, you know, it'd be pretty hard not to think about that. But Kaoruko definitely did not want to think about that, you know. But, uh, which is understandable, but I, I will continue thinking about that. But, so yeah, not too much on the Magical Girl front. But on the Matama front, we have Mat well, we have Matama... And uh, Nemo, I think, is the name of the other girl. Like, uh, I mean, they all have multiple names. It's like, their real name, their bad guy name. I'm probably just going to call her Nemo. I think that's easier, easiest for me to say. But, uh, yeah, we got to see Nemo and Matama. Like, Nemo, like, healing her up. And I'm glad that was one of the first scenes we got in the episode. Because they did a great job of establishing the relationship between them. The friendship. Like, they're clearly pretty close. I mean, she calls her an idiot and they yell at each other and stuff like that. But they're really good friends. Like, you could tell that very easily. And that scene did a good job of making that very clear. You know, she puts the ointment on her and stuff like that after she got her thrashing. But yeah, that room just full of all the merch. <laughs> I mean, some of it I would I would, I would, get, not gonna lie. But, so that was cool. Then we had a little bit of our, our main trio. Kiwi really glad that Utena's feeling better. You know, <laughs> but... Yeah, Utena definitely ready for, for some vengeance. But yeah, we, we've got to see the Matama in her natural environment. She's on a stage, singing in front of her crowd, having fun, really getting into it, even though it's supposed to be just a trap to dry out the enemy, I I, I guess. But, uh, you know, at the time, I you know, it was obvious to me and, of course, the, the, our, our girls, that, uh, that, it was, that, that it was fake. Like, there's no way she would actually get an audience of this size that are that into her, which is never going to happen. And we got the reveal that Nemo using her powers to do it, right? But uh, what, I did, what I did not understand at the time was that Matsuma did not know that she was just like, you know, <laughs> like a parent trying to, you know, make an artificial environment to give their child a self-esteem boost or whatever, like trying to help out. <laughs> but it was all a lie. And like I said, I'm glad we revealed that in the way that would embarrass her the most, you know, like just completely just compound the humiliation. So I, I enjoyed that. I felt bad for her, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. So so that was great. But she has like, yeah, these shadow manipulation powers that Nem Nemo is, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty dangerous, <laughs> pretty rough to deal with for sure. We had a certain, we had a scene where Kiwi is like mounted on top of, uh, Utena, you know, I, for a little bit where I thought this was going was that she was going to get her body manipulated and, you know, like Nemo would use her to do loot things to Utena, right? Kind of like, uh, if you've seen Tola Vru, uh, Darkness, there's a scene between Yami and Mikan where, yeah, uh, Yami pretty much suckles Mikan's opai, you know, while being manip controlled or manipulated. I don't, uh, something like that. It's been a long time since I've seen that show, but like something like that, you know. It was, or maybe it was Mikan. Actually, never mind. I think it was Mikan to Yami. Anyway, not not that important. Uh, the point is that did not end up happening, sadly. So at that point, I was so I had to kind of readjust. Like, okay, what's the lewd scene we're gonna get this episode? And eventually, got my answer. You know, because uh, after a, a grueling fight, we eventually got the turns tabled. You know, with a little bit of help of a flashbang and dollhouse and whatnot. But then once, as soon as Utena got the upper hand, she starts giving out, giving out the orders, telling Matama to strip. So nice little call back to the previous episode. Except there was, you know, more, it was a punishment. Here it's just Utena just having fun, you know, let's just, let's just call it that. But yeah, also outside in broad daylights and you know, it's got to make it more embarrassing, I would imagine. Even though there's really not that many people around. Like, the scale of people, not really that much more than the previous episode. Yeah, definitely comparable. But, yeah, the outside probably makes a big difference. <laughs> but not only does she give a strip, she makes her sing as well. <laughs> oh, God. Could you imagine? Could you imagine having to do such a thing? <laughs> but, the, yeah, the flashbacks of everyone being, like, not wanting to listen to her sing, not wanting to tell her how bad she is. But, like, you know, 
it's it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but he, he, here and now, we got her to sing, and the nakedness made a real difference because she sounds much better. You know, <laughs> like she's just she's enjoying herself a lot more too. You know, so not only does she sound better, she's just having more fun. Like I think he found her true life calling. Like she was halfway there when she discovered the idol stuff, but being naked in the process was kind of the. The final ingredients to make it truly a dream that she can enjoy, that, that will improve the world, that just the overall a net, a net positive. So I'm glad we were able to figure that out. Also funny that we did transition immediately from that to the hot springs scene. <laughs> you know, go from nakedness to more nakedness. You know, you're never a bad thing there. But yeah, apparently Matama and Nemu are Nemo whatever are, are part of our group now, so bolstering our forces. Which, you know, that's not too surprising because the sister and the leader seem seem more like the real, you know, bad guys. Like, if that makes sense. Like, they were, they always seem turnable to me, so not too surprised on that. But it, hopefully, I don't know, do we even give them a yes or no whether or not we would accept them as Nakama, as part of our group? But uh, either way, I'm sure they'll be a great addition. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's about all I, have to, all I have to say on the episode, so pretty good stuff. But yeah. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.